Hi everyone, hope you're all having a great day today. We're back on Verbling with me, Lauren, your new Verbling teacher. Um, so today, um, before I get into what we're going to be talking about, if you've never been to Verbling before, um, feel free to join my class right now. And if you generally have any problems um, joining classes, I posted a link um, before I started class, and you can go to verbling.com slash get dash reservations, and you'll be able to, uh, to book classes in advance, which is a really good idea. Hi, Andre. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great. How are you doing? I'm fine, too. Good. And we have Amer. Amer, how are you? Oh. Amer, we can't hear you for some reason. You might be on mute. So check up here on your screen. There might be a red little thing that looks like a microphone. Oh, yeah. There I we are. Yeah, thank you very much. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, nothing. I just uh, now I received email from I don't know from where. And just now I enjoy in this site. This is the first time for me. Oh, this is your first time on Verbling. Yeah, <laughs> I'm great. preparing to sleep. <laughs> great, that's great. That, um, I, um, Andre, do you think he's going to have a good time? Yeah, I'm sure. Good. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay, and then we have, um, I think that's Yavern. Yavern. Oh, Yavern just left. Maybe she didn't like me. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> It's not normal. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> when you have a, a beautiful teacher. Oh, stop it. Stop it's, it. <laughs> it is impossible. I know that, re that really sometimes is very uh, good. He's come back. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, there. Yavern? Yavern, can you hear me? Maybe you are on mute. So if you're talking and I can't hear you, there might be um, something at this part of your screen, a little red thing, and it should make you unmute. Um, what about Mohammed? Can you hear me, Mohammed? Yes, I can. How are you doing tonight? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Is it night time where you are? Yes, midnight. Oh, wow. It is midnight on Saturday? Uh, yeah. Oh, great. It is 8 o'clock p.m. for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we have uh, Gustavo. How are you doing, Gustavo? Gustavo, uh, can you hear hi, me? Hi, Lauren. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Good. I'm very good. Thank you. And you? Good. And we have Ismail. Hi, Ismail. Ismail, can you hear me? Yes, hi teacher. Hello. Hello. I'm great. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Good. Um and we have Kubra. Hi Kubra. Hi teacher. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Nice to see you back. Nice to see you too. And we have uh how do I say your name? V Veri Diana? Y yes, can you Diana? hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you uh, hear I'm me? Yes, I'm sorry. This is my first time here. I'm kind of lost. Oh, um, you know what might be going on? Um, are you hearing me talk twice? No, no, no. Now I'm here. you just once. That's that's because I had another window open. Okay, good. I was going to say, if you have your Google Hangout open and your... Mm -hmm. um, um, are you hearing? Oh, you know what? H Hi, Cynthia. Cynthia? Hello? Cynthia, I think you might have two windows open right now. So you might have your Google Hangout and the Verbling window open. So close the Verbling window and then you'll only hear me once. Okay, that's, wh that's why I was going crazy. You know, so many people talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It's okay. It happens often. Um, so, Cynthia, you might be on mute right now. So, if you're on mute, try clicking the red button on this side of your screen. Is that working for you now? Cynthia, are you talking? Hmm. Cynthia, you are speaking. I see you are in the chat. Um, I don't know what's going on. So, Cynthia, there might be a little red button on this side of your screen. Can anybody hear Cynthia? No. No. Hmm. I don't know what's going on. I'll give you a second to figure that out, okay? Oh. Try one more time, Cynthia. Try speaking. No, sorry. I think it was oh. me. I said nope. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Cynthia. I'll give you a second to figure that out. Um, hi, Gianni. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm fine. And you? I'm good. I'm uh, good. It's, um, pronunciation is Gianni. I'm Italian. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gianni. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. And we have Iman. Hello, Iman. Hello. Hi. 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 How are you doing today? Uh, fine, thank you. Good. Um, Iman, we can't hear you very well, so maybe try speaking closer to your microphone or put your volume up. Can you hear me now? No. Oh, I can hear you. It's just very, very uh, low sound. Okay, maybe I go and I get another. Yeah, maybe, or maybe I don't know where your headphone, uh, where your uh, microphone is, so maybe just bring it closer to your mouth. Yeah, well, I think I have to find another one, another, this one, this one is not working very well. i come back now in a sec. Okay. Sounds good, okay. And how have we not said hello to? I think we've said hello to everyone. Okay, great. So, um, I'm going to start off going right in with our article that we're going to look at. So today's topic is about free speech or freedom of speech. So we're going to read the article and then I want to know your opinions on it. But um, And just so everyone knows, if you're new to Verbling, um, so especially, um, is anybody else new to Verbling other than Amer? Me, very general. Oh, so Veritiano, um, are you are you new to Verbling? Yes, it's my first night. <laughs> great, great, glad to have you. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, so, if you go to the top of the chat, so go to the first yes. thing that was posted in the chat, you'll see a link. I posted a link. I said, "Hey, everyone, um, here is the document we'll be reading for this class." All right. I got so it. You can click on that. So once everyone's got that, can, can you pause because in chat I can see it. What was that? I can see it. The link oh. on chat. You can't see the link? Oh sure, no. I will repost the link in the Google chat, and you can I also go to the left and click on Google Drive. Maybe. So click on Google Drive to the left. And I also posted it in the uh, Google chat. And I'm and I'm, if you can't see it there, you can go to Google Drive on the left, and you will see something that says uh, March 23rd, um, freedom of speech or free speech. Okay, I found it. Thank you. Can you see it? Okay. Yes. Great. So first, we're going to read about it. And what I want you to do is first, you will read it out loud. And then I'm going to ask you if you can summarize it for me. So read it, and then if you don't understand any words, ask me, and I will try to explain some words to you. Um, and I'll be posting things in the verbling chat all throughout the class. So every now and then, make sure you're taking a look at this side of your screen where the verbling chat is. Does anybody not see the verbling chat? I see. You see it? I see it. Okay, great. Cynthia, I think we can hear you now. Can you hear us? I can I can hear you, but I don't know if you can hear me. Okay, I can hear you now. Oh finally. Yay. Um the only thing is um Cynthia, next time you come on, can you make sure you have headphones with a microphone on it? 
Uh huh. The reason that's better is because then we don't get uh, background noise from you. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so next time. I will, next time. I will bring one. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, um, so I'm going to screen share this for all of our viewers. Yeah. Start screen share. So can all of you see this on my screen share? Yes, you can. Great. Okay. I'm going to read the first little bit for you because I want to explain two things. So this word here, censorship. Can somebody try to describe what censorship means? It's like... Uh, go on. No, yeah? go, go no. ahead. No, go on. <laughs> Please. No, you. It's your first time. Come on, let's come go. On, yes. That's why I'm, I'm just observing, you know. Oh no, Vagdiano, come on, oh, help out. You need to talk now. Okay, okay. Uh, I guess censorship is like when you when you restrict somebody for saying something, right? S sorry, say it one more time, Cynthia. I can hear too much background noise from you, so I had to mute mute you. Say it one more time, Veridiano. Okay, I, I guess it is when you restrict somebody from say something. Exactly. So sometimes, for example, the government can censor something and yes, say... Yes, they want to shut up you, right? Exactly. They won't let you read something, they won't let you see something. Exactly. So I'm just going to read this first little bit and then the rest is going to be all you. So first off, what is censorship? Censorship is uh, the suppression or concealment of speech, images, written documents, or other public communication that may be considered rude, harmful, sensitive, or inconvenient, as determined by a government, media outlet, or other controlling body. It can be done by governments, private organizations, or by individuals. Censorship can compromise which means it can uh, threaten freedom of speech. So see that underlined words uh, uh, on the first line there? We just discussed censorship. So for something to be suppressed or concealed, that means that it is being hidden. So if I'm going to, for example, uh, suppress what Andre has to say, <laughs> then that means I'm going to not let anyone see what he's saying. So governments can do that to, to people. They can say, you know, this group in society is not allowed to be heard. We're going to censor everything this magazine says or something like that. Okay? Okay. Yes. And let's continue. So here's an example. See that picture there? That's an example of how censorship used to work even 400 years ago. That is a picture of a 1602 document. Um, and that is actually from uh, so long ago, but this stuff happens all the time, where uh, government organizations will go back and order for every single, let's say, magazine or every single um, time that something was revealed. Like, let's say, back in the days when the... Uh, kings of England were cheating on their wives. <laughs> that is very, very, very bad for people to know. So they would go back and censor anything that was written about it. So now we'll never know what is written in those black parts because they were all censored or that information was suppressed or concealed. Any questions about those new words? Uh, no. We're good? Great. Okay, let's start Harmful. with... Pardon me? Harmful. Harm harmful. So harmful means to hurt someone. So uh, if something is going to harm you, it is going to make you uh, be in pain. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Uh, where is harmful? So if something is harmful, that might mean that it's going to hurt someone. If somebody finds out about information, it could hurt someone either physically or... Do you know what I mean when I say reputation? can be uh, noxious, too. Uh, did you say obnoxious? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So if there's, like, so, Amir, let's say there's something in the newspaper that is written about the President of the United States, as an example. And let's say the President of the United States did something very bad. Okay? Yeah, 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 I understand. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
So I'm going to continue. Um, and you know what, Amir? I'm going to get you to start reading this first paragraph there, Freedom of Speech. Okay? Okay. So, Amir, you can start reading at Freedom of Speech. Uh, okay. Uh, freedom of Speech is the political right to, co to common communicate communicate one's opinions and ideas without sensible censor censorship mm -hmm. or rest restraint the term uh, the term freedom of expression is sometimes used synonymously <laughs> that's a hard one it's synonymously synonymously <laughs> In practice, the right to freedom of speech is not currently absolutely in any country, and the right is com commonly subject to limitation, as as with labor attacking someone rep reputation. Uh, land lander insult. Absently, something very offensive or road active discrimination, such as, for example, incensing ethnic hearted, inciting hatred. ethnic hatred, inciting, inciting ethnic hatred, ah, inciting ethnic hatred, copyright mm -hmm. violation, and revolution of information that is is classified. Okay, so there's a lot of new words there. Yeah. But let's say, let's say you had to guess what that might be saying. What does it say freedom of speech is? And it's okay if, if you have to ask some questions about some of the words, ask me and I'll help you. Mm, yeah, there is a lot. Maybe I will search. No, that's okay. Okay, I'll, I'll start explaining some of these words. So censorship, like we said, is when you don't allow the public or you don't allow people to see something. something okay. So freedom of speech is the political right to communicate one's opinion. So you can tell anybody yeah, what you think without censorship. Yeah. But um, what it's saying here is in practice, that means yeah. in, real, in real life, the right to freedom of speech is not currently absolute so that means it is not totally allowed anywhere in any country in the world right so yeah, it's yeah. saying it's saying that you are allowed to say what you want in most places but you're not fully allowed to say what you want in every country you're not fully allowed to do that um, and what it's saying here so it says and the right is commonly subject to limitations so that means that um, Yes, maybe in the United States, for example, or in Canada, which is where I am right now, which is where I'm from, maybe in Canada they say, you are allowed freedom of speech, but there are limitations to that freedom of speech. It, that means that you're allowed to say what you want, but there are limits to that. There is a point where you cannot say what you really think. Um, and then these next words, so libel or slander, obscenity, these are examples of um, of just new words that basically mean being disrespectful. Okay? Yes. So that was a yeah. very, very, tons of new words in there. I'm sure that helped everybody out a little bit. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is saying um, copyright violation. Do you see this? Copyright violation? Yeah. That, that means that a company, let's say, let's say McDonald's, McDonald's has um, their their slogan. It's McDonald's. I'm loving it. That's what it says everywhere, right? Or um, Subway Eat Fresh. Those are things that they copyright, which means they say only my company is allowed to do this or say this. So you can say what you want, but freedom of speech is limited because you're not allowed to say anything that goes against legal copyrights or anything that ha that the law uh, gives privilege to. Um, okay, 
Revelation, that means to reveal or to let somebody know. So, and classified means secret. So, if classified means secret, basically it's saying that paragraph just shows you that no matter how much people say you're allowed freedom of speech, there are so many limitations. Limitations. Okay. Thank you so much for reading. Amir, was there any other words there that you would like clarification on? Uh, yeah, this is word, but uh, I, I can't read. Uh, read sans, sans, words, sans mostly. <laughs> synonymously. That is a new word. Does anybody know what synonymously means? Uh, the the okay. words with the same meaning. Sorry, Mohammed, what was that? Um, it's same word in France. In France, this means um, a word who is very similar to another exactly. word. Exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um. So, so that means a synonym. I'm gonna write this down. Synonym is a word that means the same. So, if, if for example, yeah. So, for example, you could say, I like or I love. Well, those aren't really synonyms because synonym. they mean kind of different things, but that's an example. Or, um, I, uh, I can't think of an example. Uh, I'm, gl <laughs> uh, I'm glad and I'm happy, for example. It, perfect, exactly. So, what Andre said, so synonyms are I'm glad and I'm happy. They mean the same thing. So, this means that freedom of expression is the same thing. It, it's used synonymously, so it is a synonym for freedom of speech. Does that make sense there? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. And Andre, moving on to you. Okay. So, you can start reading at uh, the right to freedom of expression is recognized. Yes. Uh, the right of freedom of expression is recognized as a human right under Article uh, 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and recognized in the International Human Rights Law. Article 19, a law states that everyone shall have the right to hold opinions without interference. And everyone shall, uh, shall have the right to freedom of expression. This right shall include freedom to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas of all kinds, uh, regardless of frontiers, either orally, in writing, or in print, in the form of art, or full, any other media of his choice. Article 19 goes to uh, goes on to say that the exercise of it, these rights uh, rights carries uh, mm -hmm. uh, special duties and responsibilities. Special duties. Duties. Mm -hmm. Duties and the responsibilities and it may therefore be subject to certain restrictions when necessary for respect of the rights. Or reputation, uh, reputation, reputation, of, reputation of others, or for the protection of national security, or of public order, or of public health or morals. Great. So, Andre, if you had to summarize what that's trying to tell you, what do you think that paragraph is all about? Uh, and I know there's a lot of new words in there too. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So uh, just so everyone knows, sorry to interrupt you, that that uh, Declaration of Human Rights was made, um, it is something that, that was developed after World War II. So after World, the second big World War, um, they, they created that to protect all humans. So that is supposed to that is supposed to go for every single country in the world is supposed to follow the Declaration of Human Rights. Okay? So sorry, continue, Andre. And the uh, how the all the peoples in the world the, that it uh, respect each other. 
Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And the, uh, you can express your your ideas and the, your feelings by art, by other things, other things. Exactly. Um, however, at the very end of that, it says. Um, Article 19, so Article 19 is just the law, so it's just a way that um, basically the law is called Article 19. It must be the 19th law about freedom of speech. So it says, um, it, so it says Article 19 goes on to say that the exercise of these rights carries special, excuse me, special duties and responsibilities. So that would be responsibilities to make sure that if I give you the right to say what you want, you can't, um, you can't break the rights of other people. So it says it may therefore be subject to certain restrictions when necessary for respects of the rights of reputation for others. So what does that mean? Mm. What does that mean, Andre? Respect the the human values. Values. Yeah. Exactly. Or the moral, I think. Exactly. Exactly. So it's trying to tell you that um, as much as you should be able to say and think and believe whatever you want, there must be restrictions on this because it need, if your beliefs hurt somebody else or they could, um, you know, if you hate a certain kind of person, you shouldn't be allowed to go talk about that because that, that hurts the rights of others. Does that make sense? Yes, and uh, I think uh, you can you can't uh, humiliate the people too. Exactly, exactly. So it says for rights, uh, for respect of the rights or reputation of others. That's exactly you cannot humiliate people with the information that you know or the things that you think. Exactly. Yes. Thank you, Andre. You're welcome. And let's move on to Cynthia. So Cynthia, can you start reading at the next paragraph, starting at, um, and we're gonna. We're going to talk about this later. We're going to talk about okay. this question there later. So why don't you start at England's Bill of Rights? England's... Oh, okay. Uh, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay, I will start. England's Bill of Rights of 1680... 89. 89 mm -hmm. granted freedom of speech in par Parliament mm -hmm. and, and the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen. Adopted during the French Revolution in 1789, it specifically affirmed freedom of speech as an inalienable. Yep, inalienable. 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 <laughs> In, uh, inalienable. It's a difficult word. Don't worry. You won't see it. This is legal. This is uh, l um, how the laws are written, so you won't see that word very often. But um, that means that it's impossible to take away the right. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Impossible to take away the right. The Declaration provides for freedom of expression in Article 11, which states that the free communication of ideas and opinion is one of the most precious of the rights of men. Every citizen may accordingly speak, write, and print with freedom, but shall be responsible for such as abuses of the freedom as shall be defined by law. Great. So if you needed to guess what that's trying to say, and again, you're all getting new words, so don't worry if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so what, what do you think that's trying to say, Cynthia? Uh, it says in few in short words that you, you're free to say something, but you must uh, take care of the abuses that you can say, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also saying, so what is this saying about, um, is it saying that everybody deserves the right for freedom of speech? Do you know what that word precious uh, means? Precious? It's like, 
Uh, I don't exactly know the meaning. That's okay. That's okay. So the meaning of that word precious, so it's underlined here in that little, that small mini paragraph there. Precious means it's something that is so special that every human person should have. So mm -hmm. when it says the rights of man, that means the rights of man and women. So when it says that, it means this is something that everyone should have. So it says every citizen may accordingly speak, write, and print with freedom. But like you said, they have to be responsible for the abuses and they need to adhere to every other law at the same time. So they need to follow all the laws at the same time. Mm -hmm. Any questions, Cynthia? Oh, uh, no. I, I just was trying to pronounce the word that I can do. <laughs> That's okay. Um, un inalienable. Uh, inal oh, it's hard for me right That's now. That's okay. Let's try it again. Inalienable. Inalienable. So, inalienable. Inalienable. So I'm going to write it in the chat. In, ali, in, a, in, bull. A, in, a, in, aliable. So you're missing that N there. In, alienable. Oh, uh, in, alienable. Good, good. There you go. We got it. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I'm going to move on to Ismail. Okay. Yes. Oh, sorry, Iman. Iman, I forgot you. I'm sorry. Iman, are you there? Yes, I am here. Great. Yes. So do you want to start reading at the next one, uh, starting at Article 19? Um, okay. Uh, is the sound better now? Is it? Yep, I can hear you well. It's better, yeah, okay. Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted in 1948 states that everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference, interference, Good. And to seek and in, and to seek, receive and impart information and ideas through any media, media and regardless or of frontiers. Good. So there's a lot. Um, there's a lot of new words there. So let's let's go over a couple first. Um, okay. Um, and Cynthia, I'm gonna block. I'm sorry. I'm gonna mute you for a minute just because okay. I'm hearing a lot of background noise. So, Iman, um, what do what are you getting from the word? So it's saying, do you know what interference means? Yeah, well, it's uh, when uh, something that is blocking you to to act. Exactly. Yeah. And what is it saying? What does it mean? Um, you should be able to hold opinions without interference. And sorry, very. Very Diano, I'm going to mute you as well because your typing is so loud. <laughs> um, so Iman, if it's saying that this right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media regardless of frontiers, do you understand all the words in that? And if not, what can I explain for you? Yeah, well, it's difficult to understand all the sentence. Well, I can understand the, the sentence, but I have to take my time to read it because it's, there, there are too many, you know, too, too many verbs there and you know, to seek, to receive, to impart. <laughs> yes, uh, I yeah, know. But yeah, okay. So it's just uh, saying that everybody should say whatever they or express, whatever they want to express or they can find or look for any information that they want to 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 look for right and it's saying um through any media so that means yeah. um you know through um any kind of you know if you want to impart information through video or through text or through the internet or books yeah. or magazines what do you think of that do you agree 
if I agree that we everybody has the right to uh, so, well, I yeah. don't think everybody has a right. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, that is there, that declaration of human rights is there, but uh, uh, usually somebody trying to Sorry. block too much when somebody gives too much information. You're totally right. And that's why yeah. I thought this was an important thing to talk about because this Declaration of Human Rights is supposed to apply to everyone. Yeah. Everyone in the world. Yeah. But usually it's not like that. Usually it is the contrary. It's very difficult to to make your voice being heard. You, you are so right. And if everyone heard that word that Iman said, she said, it's normally the contrary. The contrary means the opposite or totally different. Um, and, um, you know, I'm going to teach you a new expression right now. So it's called, when you say something, when I'm looking for, um, for something and you say something that was so correct, so right, we say it's, you're hitting the nail on the head. So you know what a nail is, right? A nail is like, for example, I'm taking a hammer and I, this is the nail. Okay? So when, when we say, you hit the nail on the head, I'm going to put it in the chat. You hit the nail on the head. That means that you're, you're that another expression, you're bang on. Do you understand what that means? Does that kind of make sense? There, Iman? Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying um, to tell you that you're totally right. You are yeah, so right. right. It, it, I mean, it's almost like a joke that the, the Declaration of Human Rights is supposed to guarantee this for yeah. everyone, and we all know that generally somebody is stopping people from having this freedom. Yes. Thank you so much, Iman. You are welcome. Thank and let's you. Move on to, you're welcome. Let's move on to Ismail. Yes. Hi, Ismail. So, can you please start at today, freedom? Yes. Today, freedom of speech or the freedom of expression is recognized in international and regional human rights law. The right is protected in Article 19 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Article 10 of the European Convention of, on Human Rights, Article 13 of the American Convention on Human Rights, and Article 9 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, based on John Milton's arguments, freedom of speech is understood as a right that includes not only the right to express, or disseminate information and ideas, but three further distinct aspects. The right to seek information and ideas, the right to receive information and ideas, the right to impart information and ideas. Great. So, um, Ismail, what is that trying to tell you? What does that paragraph mean? It is talking about in this paragraph the uh, work uh, coming from the freedom of speech and the. Uh, That's okay. You can take a second. Basement. Uh, the freedom of speech are placed in uh, different. Uh, mm hmm. So different, and they're placed in different, paper. yeah, there in different some, countries. Uh, yes, there are some uh, convention around the world in different places, and mm -hmm. there are a uh, law article or uh, clauses. Uh, about human rights law, freedom of speech. Yes, yes, and what is, what is this person, so John Milton, who is underlined here, he was a British man, 
So he was um, a man who, um, he died in the 1600s, and he said way back, way back then, 400 years ago, he said, freedom of speech isn't just about saying what you think, it's about other things too. And what is he mostly saying? So it's not just about saying what you think, it's also about what? What else is he saying it's about? Explain, not what you think. Pardon and me? Ab about expression, not think, not only what you think. Yes, yes, and he's also saying, do you see those three little bullet points down there, so these three points? He's saying you shouldn't only be allowed to say what you think or express yourself, you should also be allowed and always have the right to, sorry, for everyone who doesn't have the link, I'm just posting it back in the chat right now. Anyways, so you should always have the right to seek information. So if I want to get information from my government, I should have the right to get information. I should have the right to seek and receive any information that I want, and I should have the right to tell anyone information that I want. So that in part means to tell others, right? So that was kind of a tough one, Ismail, but do you have any questions about what some of those words meant? Disseminate, what does mean disseminate? Disseminate means to spread. So if I am, so um, I'm just going to put that in the chat. Disseminate is to spread. So, for example, you can disseminate information, for example, you could disseminate political information before an election. So. You can even look at what verbling does as dissemination. So verbling, um, no, not really. That's not a good example. But it's basically um, trying to spread information. It can, it can even be, let's say, um, I believe that, um, you know, back in the 1960s, I believe that women should have equal rights as men, or in the 1900s, you know, um, before women had the same rights as men, before women could vote. So I would make up a flyer, make up some information, and I would disseminate it and give it out to anybody on the street. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Any other words that you didn't understand? Any other words that you didn't understand, Isma? There is no picture. Sorry, what, what was that? Laurie? Oh. Yes, I'm there. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to go because tomorrow I have uh, work. Oh, but that's I, okay. I, will, I really enjoy it. I will be every day now. This is the first time. Thank you very much and have Good. a nice day for everybody. Good. Nice to meet you, Amir, and I hope to, that you come back to Burbling. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Have a good work shift. See you later. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye, bye. Um, okay, so Ismail, do you have any more questions? No question, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. And Kubra, Kubra, you can start with the relationship to other rights. Okay. Um, relationship to other and rights. Give me one second, right. Kubra. I'm just. Can you give me one second? Oh, Kub Kubra, Kubra. Can you wait yes. one second? I just want to make sure that I have enough for everybody to read. So one, two, three, four, and um, one, two. Okay, I need to split this in half for a second, okay? So... Uh, I can't understand, teacher. Is anybody watching my screen share? Yes, we are. I know, yes. but is anybody watching my screen share right now? Yes. Okay, good. Yes, I've, I've just um, split this up because I've realized that we don't have enough uh, reading for everybody here. So give me one second. Uh, 
Am and I unfortunately, reading? Unfortunately, I'm. I, I hate to do this. Uh, give me one second, Kubra. I'm just fixing some things here. Okay. Um, okay. So, Kubra, now I'm going to get you to start reading at uh, the right to freedom. But I'm going to have to stop you once you get to information on the fourth line. Okay. I will let you know. Okay. okay. So, Kubra, you can start mm -hmm. at the right to freedom. Ra the right to freedom of speech and e expression is closely related to other, uh, other rights and may be limited when uh, conflicting with other rights, the limitations on freedom of speech. The right to freedom of expression uh, is also re related to, uh, to the right to a fair trial and uh, court proceeding, proceeding, which may limit ex uh, ex access uh, to the search for information to d uh, determine the oh, op oh, uh, Kubra, Kubra, okay. if you look at my screen share, I just separated that sentence very quickly. So you're probably looking at the document right now, but I'm going to stop you there, and I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, so, if you're looking at those first two sentences that you just read out, what are they trying to say? Do you know what a fair trial is? Do you know uh, what a fair trial no, is? No, no, I haven't. So, a trial is mm -hmm. like when, uh, when, you go, when you go to court uh, to see the judge. Um, so... If you are a criminal, I'm putting this in the chat. If you are a criminal or you break the law, you go to court and have a trial. Do you understand what a court is? Uh, I understand. So, I understand. Good. So, so if so, what this paragraph is saying. Is what so? What do you think it's saying? If it says the right to freedom of expression is also related to the right of a fair trial and court proceeding, um, which may limit access to the search of information, what do you think that's trying to say? It's it's kind mm -hmm. of a difficult question. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I actually I understand, but I can't uh, I can't say. Uh, Try and then I'll help you out. I'll try. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, that's okay. I can help you out right now. <laughs> so basically, okay. what that's saying is let's say a criminal, a bad person, does something so bad, and what they've done is so bad, but like for example, let's say uh, somebody has murdered someone, killed somebody else. They still have the right, even though society like you and me, we think that person should go straight to jail. We don't like that person. We don't want to listen to them. This is saying that people, even criminals, should be allowed to speak their reasons as to they should have free speech. Do you agree with that? So, Kubra, do you think that even criminals should be allowed to have free speech when they do something really bad? Kubra? Oh, Kubra, I can't hear you. I don't know if you're talking, but if you are, you might have put yourself on mute. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave you for a second and move on, but when your microphone is working again, let me know. Okay, I'm, before I um, go to Michael and Ruth Thyssen, I'm going to go to Mohammed and uh, Veridiano because they were here at the beginning of class. So I'm just going to get them to go first. So, Mohammed, can you please start at It May Also Determine? 
Okay, right now? Yes, please. It may also determine the opportunity and means in which freedom of expression is manifested within court proceedings. As a general principle, freedom of expression may not limit the right to privacy as well as the honor and reputation of others. However, greater latitude is given when cri criticism of public figures is involved. Good. Um, Mohammed, do you have a TV on in the background? Uh, oh, no. No. No? Why? Oh, because I, I can hear people talking in the background. Is ah, that... Okay, yeah. My mom. Oh, okay. Um, next time you come to a verbaling class, can you make sure that you don't have any background noise, please? Okay, yeah, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Um, what do you think that that, um, that paragraph is trying to tell us? Mm. I don't know. I uh... So, what is a reputation? Do you know what that is? Reputation? Uh, yeah, I know what this word means. Something that people uh, uh, know about, but without knowledge, maybe. Yeah, so for example, I hope that I have a good reputation as a verbling teacher. I hope that my reputation is that I am very kind to others and that every student knows that I care about them. That's an example. I want my reputation to be very good. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so th that's that's an example of what I want my reputation to be. Um, that's okay, Kubra. Don't worry. Okay. It's okay. Sorry, Kubra just lost connection, so I'm she's typing in the chat. Oh, okay. Um, okay, but anyways, so Mohammed, so mm -hmm. it's saying um, the right to freedom of expression is also related to the right. To, oh, sorry, sorry, wrong. Um, sorry, Mohammed, you have a lot of background noise. Is it possible to stop that noise, or...? Okay, I'm going to try, sorry. Okay, you I'm going to mute you for a second. I'm going to have to summarize it for you, just because we're running out of time. But, okay, so, um, what that paragraph is trying to say for everyone watching right now is that, um, so it says, as a general principle, freedom of expression may not limit the right to privacy. So. Um, so that means that some people might want some of their information to be private and that's understandable of course um, so it's trying to say that people should be allowed to have privacy so doesn't that seem a little bit strange to everyone I mean how can you say that people should have free speech when you have all of these rules and uh, different things like you can say what you want and you can think what you want but you can't you know, say certain things. There's all these things that you're not allowed to say. So what does freedom of speech really mean? Right? Um, okay, I'm going to move on to Averidiano. You can start on this last page here. So start at, um, I'm gonna, yeah, start at the right to freedom of expression. All right. Um. The right to freedom of expressions is particularly important for media, which plays a special role as the be as the be the general right to freedom of, of expression for all. However, freedom of the press is not necessarily enabling freedom of speech. Um, Judging what is? Um, yes. you know what? You can continue just because I'll get uh, I will get uh, Ruthison and um, Michael. You two can read all of our discussion questions out loud, okay? All right. Okay, so yeah, very Diana, why don't you continue? Uh, Joseph Lindem Lindenberg, is that right? Uh, li actually, that's a German name, so uh, it's it's pronounced right. li Lichtenberg. Okay, Joseph Lichtenberg has outlined the conditions in which freedom of the press may constrain freedom of speech. For example, where the media suppress information or stifles the diversity of voice. St that's that's stifles. Stifles. Stifles mm -hmm. the diversity of voice inherent in freedom of speech. Lindenberg argues the freedom of the press is simply a form of property rights summoned up by the principle no money, no voice. So um, that's a pretty controversial thing to say. Controversial? 
Um, what does that mean? Uh, like, you say something and I disagree? Yes. So this means that many people, I'm writing in this in the chat, many people strongly agree and many strongly oh, disagree. Yeah. Right. So what is this Judith Lichtenberg trying to tell us here? What does she think that, what she says, no money, no voice. What does that mean? Uh, does that, does it mean like, um, it doesn't mean your, I, I'm not sure, it, it, it is like when you, when the media try to, to restrain something from society, like, um, what about if a mirror was about to rape Earth and then the media just inform us in the last minute, so it's, it's like, it's hiding information from us. So it doesn't matter your financial class or something like that. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like, like so here. So she says w the media suppresses information or stifles the diversity of voices. So if something suppresses something, that means it's it's not allowing it to um, to be heard. Yes, yeah, like it, it, it is about to it is about to hit Earth like a mirror. Or they don't inform us; they just let you inform us in the, in the last minute. So it's like suppressing information for us. So exactly. So no money, no voice. That means if you don't have money to pay the press, the press is like the people who write the news. So if you don't have the money to pay them, then you don't have a voice. Nobody's going to um, listen to I you. Get it. Yeah, and that that's a common thing that we say in English: no money, no voice. So you have. You have no money, you have no right to say, no right to discuss. Yeah, or we can, you know, maybe the Human Declaration of Rights will say, um, maybe it will say, everybody has the right to speak, but if you have no money, no one's going to listen to you. Right? Because, because you have no way to publish what you are <laughs> discussing. Exactly. So if you are a big company and you have lots of money, you can pay the news reporters, you can yeah. pay you know, government to say certain things about you, but you don't have, you know, if you're just like me or you're just like but, you, no one's going to listen to us. But actually the, the media suppress many, many things, like I was watching, watching a video about Michael Jackson and then, of course, before he died, and he was... He was telling to people, uh, I want you to listen to me because this is very important to know. The books that you read, uh, they, some books are not real. They change the, the, the history, you know. Uh, the media controls everything. They don't let you know everything that you should know that you were supposed to know. So they control everything. They control what do you eat, what do you watch, what do you read. Totally. And you're totally right. And um, just to help everyone uh, listening follow along, um, good expression of your thoughts, by the way, very Diano. So what he's saying there is, you know, Michael Jackson said before he died, everybody stop listening to the media because they're only yes. telling you maybe one tiny little part of the truth and everything that they're leaving out is very important, but you aren't hearing what's real. You are being told what the media wants you to know. Yeah, that's what that's what he was telling, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's really sad. It's really sad. Um, so just so everyone knows, um, I'm gonna get Michael and um. Oh, I guess our other. Okay, so Michael, how are you doing today? Can you hear me? I can hear you. How about that? <laughs> Finally got this thing working. Good, good. Um, okay. Sorry that. So I where do you want me to read? Um, I would like you to read our discussion questions. Now, I'd just like to say, um, if anybody needs to leave right at 9 or they want to join another class, that's okay. You can leave. Um, I don't have a class after this, so I'm going to keep the conversation going. For those of you, if you want to stay a little longer, because no, we didn't get yeah. to talk about these questions yet. So if you need to leave, that's okay. You can just leave. And I hope you have a great day or night. And if you can stay, that's great. We'll just talk about these questions a little bit. So, Michael, you can read all of our discussion questions, and I'll screen share that for you right now. I've got it. You don't have to. Great. 
All right. Uh, number one, do different countries have different ideas about who should have freedom of speech? You can you can say all of them together because we don't really have time to do them all separately. Okay. Two, should governments be able to mandate what can and can't be talked about publicly, such as on TV, the Internet, radio, etc.? Three, what do you think would happen if countries allowed total freedom of speech? Four, should we be able to search at absolutely anything on the five would censorship and limited freedom of speech protect us from engaging in hateful acts or thinking hateful thoughts six should children under the age of 18 have the right to freedom of speech seven should certain really bad things be banned from the internet so those are a lot of really really uh, interesting questions I don't even know what I think about all of those but uh, Michael, what do you have any comments about any of those? Especially considering the article we just looked at. Well, um, one of the things that is kind of interesting that's going on right now is the debate over um, what's appropriate with the internet and and how we're seeing governments throughout the world that are that are you know recently we've seen in countries in the Middle East and. And uh, that have gone, uh, that have collapsed because of of people that have been emboldened um, from feeling uh, passionate about these things. It's really quite something to see what can happen when people really take these things to heart. Yep, yep, and um, it's even interesting to see the power that if we say. Um, where where are you from, Michael? Michael, where are you from? Utah. You're from Utah? Yeah. Oh, okay, so English is your first language? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I was going to say, because I didn't hear much of an accent with you. So, is this your first time on Verbling? Uh, it's my second. Okay, great. So, because this is um, an ESL site, you might do really well in the advanced classes, just so you know. Okay. Um, but anyways, yeah, I agree. I think it's um, I think it's a, it's interesting how much power we do give to young people, though. Like, you know, a fourteen year old has a phone with internet on it and can look up absolutely anything they want, or they have a computer at home that they can, you know, read up on really really bad things and is it up to government or is it up to us as parents to uh, censor them or to allow them freedom of talking about bad things. Does anybody else have any comments on that? Betty, Diana, what do you think? You hear me? I can hear you. Yes, uh, I think I, I agree with Michael, you know. Uh, <laughs> I think we. I think parents should restri restrain, or uh, rest restrict, mm -hmm. Re restrict some, uh, like like you said. Uh, nowadays, all kids want a cell phone, but why does any kid any why does a kid need a cell phone? Like, what is the purpose for a self for a fifteen years old teenager, sixteen years old teenager, or many teenagers spend too many too, too much time on the internet, you know, and making use of inappropriate um, information. Information, and so I think some families uh, should actually restrain some of the information that the teenagers are receiving, so, such as from the TV, from the internet, or everything else. Absolutely, I, I agree with you. I think um, I think all this talk about freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom um, to access information, things like that. I, I think that it, they're great ideas for adults, but when we give that power to teenagers who are being bombarded with, you know, basically things that can rot their minds or can really, um, you know, mess with their self-esteem or something. Like uh, I, I I saw here on question. Um, should children under age of 18 
have the right of freedom of speech. This is a really controversial, you know, because uh, I don't think that, I don't know, it's my opinion, I don't think that at 18 years old, um, maybe in some occasions, you know, this person would have the the open mind to, to speak and to discuss about anything related to government, to politicians, you know, and perhaps it should be over 18, not like 21, not 18. So you think it should be even older? Yeah, it should be a little bit older. Like, I, I don't think that an 18 years old person should be able to access no, any information. Access, yes, access so much information. Interesting. Interesting point of view. And again, it's so hard to decide these things, especially it all depends on who the parents are and how do we control it? How do we control censorship? Um, Cynthia, do you have any comments on this? Uh, I was listening what everybody was saying about young people and have the information. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know exactly, I mean, pe young people, I think sometimes take information um, like a joke sometimes. They, they don't pay attention too much for, for it. And I think just few, I mean, countable young people think about it and about I, I was I want to tell about something I mean countries that is top uh, for example not allowed to tell to to people to speak their ideas I'm I'm from Peru and here actually uh, people are free to say whatever they want I don't see anything I mean like something big that can prohibit it to do it mm. people mm, here is like allowed to say everything that they want but obviously sometimes it affects someone they uh, have to go to the court mm -hmm. because the because the other person um I don't know how to say, but uh, make like uh, go to probably can go to the jail for say bad things. Yeah, and is it like that in Peru? Can you go to jail if you say something really bad? Oh yeah, it happens once with uh, uh, someone from the prince who was on TV. She said something, and then the. Um, and then the other person who was talking about, uh, he was like so angry, and then I uh, uh, like happened something, and she she goes to to the jail for like three months, and it was like too bad because I mean that person used to say everything that she she thought and then when she returned to the TV she has had to stop saying some stuff because uh, they don't allow her to do it because if she is still talking like she used to she can return to jail right so that's really interesting Cynthia so you're saying that your friend used to say whatever she wanted all the time and then she got she got sent to jail for something that she said and now she's different she doesn't speak her mind anymore because she'll get in trouble oh, by yeah. the government yeah yeah it wasn't exactly my friend my friend was someone from the TV Peruvian TV mm -hmm. and she was famous she talk about everything about gossips and stuff about famous people on here so she get she get in trouble because of it and yeah, probably she is you is talking about the things that she used to talk because of it. Mm hmm. 
and that that's that's all what I wanted to bring about for everyone, right? Like, if your country says freedom of speech is allowed, but then there's all these limitations, is that really yeah. freedom of speech? No, it's, it's not. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm just writing here. Um, Mohammed has too much background noise, but he, I told him that if he wants to start the debate on my Facebook wall, we'll see if people will comment about it. And that would be exciting. Feel free. Feel free to comment. Um, I'm going to end it here, but um, unless anyone has something very important they'd like to say, anyone else in the Hangout? Well, I hope that you found this um, interesting, and I hope that you all had an opportunity to practice as much as you wanted to. Um, and I will see you soon. Um, again, check out my Facebook page or like me on Verbling. I just reposted in the chat. And um, have a great day or night or whatever time it is for you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank nice you to meet you, too. See you later. See you later. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome.